بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بداية أتمنى أنه إن شاء الله الجميع يكونون بصحة وسلامة ونبدي محاضرة كورونا فيروس إنفكشن كوفيد إن برغنسي This lecture is part of the continuous medical education program for the College of Medicine in Sansari University. The objectives, the aim from this lecture is to describe the fetal and maternal effects of COVID-19, list the investigations and treatment options for an infected pregnant woman, summarize the precautions required to prevent the infection, predict the time and mode of delivery of an affected the pregnant woman. The virus, the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, is a new strain of coronavirus causing COVID-19, first identified in Wuhan City, China in 2019. Usually causes mild to moderate upper respiratory tract illnesses, like the current cold, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and the severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS. The virus is evolving, so the killing data can change rapidly. The transmission, most cases of COVID-19 transmitted by human-to-human -human transmission. There are two routes by which the COVID-19 has spread. The direct route from person-to-person -person infection within two meters, so the current Recommendations for keeping adequate social distances when you go outside home. The respiratory secretions can enter the eye, mouth, nose, or the airways. And this risk increases the longer someone has a close contact with an infected person who has symptoms. The second route is indirectly via touching a surface, object, or hand of an infected person contaminated with the respiratory secretions and subsequently touching one's own mouth, nose, or eyes. So washing hand is very important to prevent this route of transmission. Transmission in a pregnancy. Pregnant women do not appear more likely to contract the infection than the general population. But the problem is that the pregnancy alters the body immune system. And there is some sort of immune suppression in pregnancy to prevent the rejection of the growing fetus. So we expect in a pregnant woman more severe symptoms to happen with any viral infection, not only with COVID-19 infection. With regard to vertical transmission, the vertical transmission antenatally or during the intrapartum period is possible. And two rep reports have published evidence of IgM for SARS-CoV-2 and the neonatal serum at birth. We know that this immunoglobulin is of large molecule which doesn't cross, cross the placenta. So this is of fetal and not from maternal origin due to transplacental infection with the virus. Effect on a pregnant woman. There could be a cohort of asymptomatic individuals However, they are carrying the virus without evidence of infection. Most women experience only mild or moderate cold flu-like symptoms, cough, fever, shortness of breath, headache, and anosmia are other relevant symptoms. More severe symptoms such as pneumonia and marked hypoxia seen in older people, the immune suppressed, and those with long-term conditions such as diabetes, cancer, chronic lung diseases. These severe symptoms can occur in a pregnant woman, but the absolute risks are low. We continue on the effect of pregnant women. There is a risk of preterm birth before uh, the patient completing her pregnancy, and mostly it is an iatrogenic indication for a maternal wise in a seriously ill patient. Those admitted to hospital with COVID are hypercoagulable and they are likely to be at risk of maternal venous thromboembolism. Self-isolation at home and hospital admission are likely to increase the risk further. 
According to the WHO report that looked at small sampling of pregnant women with COVID-19, of the 147 women studied, 8% had severe and 1% had a critical disease. Another case series from New York of 43 women tested positive for COVID showed a similar pattern of disease severity to the non-pregnant individuals, where 86% of cases were mild, 9% severe, and 5% critical. Effects on the fetus. Currently, no data suggesting increased risk of miscarriage. However, high fever in the first trimester of pregnancy, regardless of the cause, can lead to birth defects. Again, notice that the uh, virus is teratogenic. The virus can be transmitted vertically, but the pregnancy is affected and the significance for the neonate has yet to be determined. Iatrogenic birth will result in prematurity and the premature newborn at risk of respiratory, cardiovascular, and neurological morbidities. There was evidence of fetal compromise and preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes in at least one report. The incubation period of the virus is about 2 to 14 days, and this is the base for social isolation for two weeks. The virus can be transmitted via close contact and respiratory droplets even before they become symptomatic, and this route of transmission is important, especially for the uh, persons who are caring for uh, an affected individual or for the medical staff, they should avoid the social contact with the old age or other uh, proportion of population who are at high risk due to silent viral transmission. The diagnosis, the clinical manifestation include fever, fatigue, myalgia, dry cough, shortness of breath, Few patients may present with nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, hemoptysis, or diarrhea. However, the main presentation could be asymptomatic or those with very mild symptoms that can pass undiagnosed. Peripheral white blood cell count is normal or decreased, and the lymphocyte count may be reduced as it is a viral infection. T-reactive protein may be increased, which is a marker of infection but it is not specific. Some patients may have mild thrombocytopenia, elevated level of liver, liver enzymes, and creatine phosphokinase. A computed tomography of the chest without contrast is the most useful investigation to confirm or rule out viral pneumonia and should be performed in suspected cases as the radiation exposure to the fetus is very small. So we should not say that this pregnant woman will not send her for CT, no. We should do it for suspected cases. In a recent report, the sensitivity of chest CT in diagnosis COVID is greater than that of real-time PCR, 98% versus 71%. Blood catcher for bacteria can cause pneumonia, is ideally taken and uh, can direct the antimicrobial therapy. We continue the diagnosis. SARS-CoV-2 is the etiologic agent of COVID and it's a nucleic acid detection using real-time polymerase chain reaction is considered the reference standard for the diagnosis. Specimens can be taken from the saliva, from upper respiratory tract and from lower respiratory tract or other body secretions. Repeated testing may be required to confirm the diagnosis and if the SARS-CoV-2 nucleic acid is not detected in the respiratory samples taken on two consecutive occasions at least 24 hours apart, the COVID can be ruled out. Serology is a diagnostic procedure only done when the PCR is not available and it is important to screen for other respiratory infections, other viruses, bacterial pneumonia, chlamydia, and mycoplasma pneumonia. The treatment, pregnant women suspected of COVID should be isolated and investigated. Women admitted to hospital with one of the following, 
clinical and or radiological evidence of pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, fever equal or more than 37.8, and at least one of acute persistent cough, hoarseness, nasal discharge congestion, shortness of breath, sore throat, wheezing, or sneezing. Furthermore, we recommend that women with an isolated fever should be investigated by sending a full blood count if lymphopenia is identified on the full blood count testing for COVID should be arranged. So not every patient with fever uh, can, is managed as a case of COVID. You should send for full blood count and then if lymphopenia, we send for COVID testing. Those diagnosed with infection should be admitted to a negative pressure isolation ward, preferably with a multidisciplinary expertise in the hospital. The patient should be triaged and stratified into mild, those whom symptomatic, patient with a stable vital signs, severe cases when there is tachypnea, respiratory rate equal or more than 30 per minute, resting oxygen concentration equal or less than 93% and the arterial blood oxygen partial pressure equal or less than 300 millimeter mercury. Critical cases when there is shock with organ failure, respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation or refractory hypoxemia requiring extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. The management should be with a multi disciplinary team, including midwife, obstetrician, specialist in intensive care medicine, microbiologist, anesthetist, and the neonatologist. All medical staff caring for COVID-19 patients should have the personal protective equipment, including gown, N95 masks, googles, and the gloves. Supportive therapy, adequate rest, Hydration by taking the fluid and IV fluids. Nutritional support, especially in, we concentrate on vitamin C. Water and electrolyte balance should be ensured. Acetaminophen to decrease the temperature in case of fever. It is essential to monitor the, vi monitor the vital signs and oxygen saturation. Depending on the disease severity, supplemental oxygen can be given via nasal cannula in case of hypoxemia, intubation and mechanical ventilation to maintain the oxygenation. Other complications may include septic shock, acute kidney injury, and virus-induced cardiac injury. Therefore, it is important to check the arterial blood gases, lactate, renal function, liver function, cardiac enzymes, as indicated according to clinical situation. Antiviral treatment, has been used to treat the COVID infection in China, and they are considered as safe in pregnancy. Combination therapy with antiproteases, lobinavir, and ritonavir has been used. The WHO advises caution and careful risk-benefit analysis before using the investigational therapeutic agent in a pregnant woman. Remdesivir, which is a nucleotide analog, and the chloroquine, which is an anti-malaria drug which has been shown to be effective against SARS-CoV-2 in vitro. Clinical trials have been uh, evaluating the effect of chloroquine. Chloroquine has not been formally assigned to be a pregnancy category by the FDA, as there are no controlled data in human pregnancy. However, chloroquine has been used in the prophylaxis and treatment of malaria during pregnancy without evidence of fetal harm. The antibacterial treatment, antibiotics indicated when there's evidence of secondary bacterial infection, and uh, if it is suspected, should be given without delay. We give intravenous ciprioxone uh, initially, and then uh, change according to the culture and sensitivity results. Corticosteroid therapy, in general, this is not recommended because it may delay the vir virus clearance from the body. However, short-term, three to five days, administration of methylprednisolone can be given for patients when dyspnea and hypoxemia are severe to ameliorate the lung inflammation and prevent acute respiratory distress syndrome. 
beta methazone 12 mg intramuscularly followed by another dose 24 hours later should be considered to promote fetal lung maturity when preterm delivery is anticipated before 34 weeks gestational age. Thromboprophylaxis, all pregnant women with COVID-19 or suspected to have COVID-19 should receive low molecular weight heparin prophylaxis unless delivery is expected within 12 hours. All women admitted to hospital with COVID-19 infection should receive at least 10 days of prophylactic low molecular weight heparin following discharge from hospital. Advice for pregnant women. Any pregnant woman who may be panicked because of uh, a contact or exposure to infected personnel, we can reassure her that most likely she will have no symptoms or mild symptoms. Those with more severe symptoms or evidence of a delayed recovery should seek a medical advice with an enhanced care. Women who is pregnant should be engaged in the social distancing measures with a special care for those above 28 weeks gestation as they are at risk of having more severe disease. The social distancing guidance, stay at home, go outside only for food, health, or work if you cannot work from home. If you go out, stay two meters, six feet away from all uh, other people at all times. Wash your hands as soon as you get home. Do not meet others, even friends. And the important advice is that you can spread the virus even if you have no symptoms. Women at high risk, those women with significant heart disease, congenital or acquired, those with cancers, severe respiratory conditions such as cystic fibrosis or severe asthma, those with rare diseases and inborn error of metabolism increase the risk of serious infections such as sickle cell disease. For those who group with high risk, the recommendation is that they should strictly avoid contact with any someone who, who has a symptoms of coronavirus infection. Don't leave home. Don't attend any gatherings. Don't go out for shopping, leisure, or travel. And when you need food or medication, they should be left at the door to minimize the contact. And keep in touch using remote technology, such as phone, internet, and social media. Advice regarding to the uh, visits to the clinic and hospital for a pregnant woman. Those women with low risk group, they can phone the doctor and they can delay the visit according to a scheduled program. Those with risky group for the mother or the baby, she should attend the antenatal visit and she should go to the maternity unit. Reassure the women that the maternity units are doing everything to minimize the spread of coronavirus infection to the healthy woman and they should not be deferred from coming to the hospital when they need care. Anyone uh, who has symptoms of COVID or anyone in the household contact, please contact your maternity team and they should not attend the routine clinic. Keep the number of people with, uh, with the visitor to one and they should not bring children with them. Smoking is likely to increase the uh, disease severity, so there is a need to stop smoking as soon as possible. Regarding the maternal mental well-being, a lot of anxieties are experienced at that time, including the risk of COVID virus itself, the impact of social isolation and not contacting the other relatives, family, the potential of reduced household finances and the income of the family at this time will add to the anxiety of the pregnant woman. Again, coronavirus epidemic increases the risk of domestic violence. So we should put in mind when uh, looking care for the pregnant woman. Timing of delivery. The timing should be individualized based on the disease severity, existing comorbidities such as preeclampsia, diabetes, cardiac disease, etc obstetric history, gestational age, and fetal condition. In mild and stable cases, responding to treatment, and in the absence of fetal compromise, 
pregnancy can be continued to term under, under close super villains. The term between 37 weeks and 40 weeks and 42 weeks gestation, which is the nine month of a pregnancy. Regular monitoring of the vital signs, the oxygen saturation, dynamic assessment of electrolyte, fluid balance, arterial blood gases, acid base balance is required. Ultrasound examination for the fetus and the fetal heart rate is recommended to assess the fetal well being until the time of delivery. In a critical cases, continuing the pregnancy may endanger the safety of the mother and her fetus. In this situation, delivery may be indicated even if the baby is premature. So, termination of pregnancy should be considered as an option before fetal viability is reached in order to save the pregnant woman's life after careful consultation, consultation with the patient, her family, and the ethical board. This is a common question that we face it. If I have a COVID-19 at time of delivery, will I need a cesarean section? Whether to deliver vaginally or via cesarean section depends on a lot of factors and not only having COVID-19. A vaginal delivery is favorable to cesarean delivery, provided that the, patient, the patients are eligible for vaginal delivery and aren't recommended for cesarean section. For example, women with previous two more Cesarean sections should be delivered by cesarean. Performing surgery on a body already weakened with a serious virus might cause additional complications. Another question, can coronavirus pass through the press mode? Recent few studies showed that there is no risk of spread or transmission through the press mode. However, if the patient chose to breastfeed her baby and that's what we encourage for, Precautions that can limit the baby's exposure to the virus, wearing a face mask, washing hands thoroughly before touching the baby, be sure to get under the nails and to the webbing of the fingers, washing hands thoroughly before handling a breast pump or bottle. Bottle neck, considering having someone who is well, give the baby a bottle of expressed breast milk until the woman become physically well that can she uh, cares about her baby. Thank you so much.